A few years back I spent some time working with one of the sisters of the Benedictine community at Turvey Abbey, just outside the town I live in in Bedfordshire, with my friend Sister Lucy. We spent a couple of years meeting together once a month. I went on several retreats there, studying and practicing the Enneagram tool for spiritual discernment and personality types. And during this period, um, we discussed at a certain point um, a recurrent dream that I'd had for some years in which an old lady would appear. Um, Sister Lucy pointed out to me um, the archetype in Jungian analysis, so Carl Jung's archetypes, and the presence of one of those of the wise old man and the wise old woman. Immediately I was piqued, my interest was piqued. What was happening in the dream was that um, a woman that I took to be um, old and threatening, I would flee from. So who knows what was appearing in the dream. <clears throat> but certainly at a certain point in certain dreams, similar themes, similar characters would turn up occasionally. And there was the persistence of this, what I saw to be an old hag or an old woman. The idea that it was a wise woman didn't occur to me. And in fact, given one's sense of separateness, uh, one's sense of isolation, one's existential angst, um, one's continual pattern of being plagued by separateness, isolation, being threatened, feeling threatened in dreams, and just that unconscious anxiety reappearing through the unconscious or the repressed and suppressed stuff. As I switched off the control tower of the thinking mind or the separate self, um, as I lay in dream states, <coughs> of course, um, much of the you know lifetime of memory and <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> of uh, past and unimagined and suppressed events all manifest in this strange, seemingly strange story of dreams. Dreams aren't really strange at all, of course, are they? They're, they are just dreams. Dreams are doing what dreams do, which is be dreamy. <laughs> uh, the imagination is fired by the prompts and the suppressed and the memories of all of that uh, unconscious mind. Yet this wise old woman, let's call her that from here on, would appear and I would flee. So the conversation I'd had with Sister Lucy was, we, we, I described what was occurring in the dreams. I seem to remember that I was walking through a park and the wise old woman appeared. And I ran away from her and she didn't chase me but she she kept walking at a reasonable pace to try and catch up with me, as if she wanted something. So, of course, this made me flee all the more. Sister Lucy suggested to me that I, instead of, should I have the dream again, or next time I go to bed, in fact, to make a verbal affirmation aloud that, uh, should I meet the wise old woman, should I meet the old lady in the dream this night, instead of running away from her, I will stop turn round, extend my hand uh, in a greeting and hopefully shake her hand and introduce myself. So I said this out loud. That night I said this out loud. That night the dream reappeared. And it wasn't an every night dream, but I guess the prompting of the verbal affirmation somewhat enabled the appearance of the dream itself. So there I am, I think this is where the park scene comes from, beginning the process of running away, and the dream character, the Billy, let's call him that, in the dream, didn't run, he ran a couple of paces, stopped, turned around and held out his palm, and the wise old woman uh, reciprocated by shaking my hand, and then we sat together on the bench, and there's an image remembered of a conversation between the two of us, a friendly one, no more fleeing 
no more frightening sense of this woman, just friendliness, oneness, connectivity. Super interesting to find that the wise old woman in Jungian analysis is the archetype for wise feminine energy. So here I am, fundamentally, and fundamentally uh, a body, a consciousness of somewhat of masculine energy. And of course it's entirely appropriate, and if we're truly blessed, to merge as much as happens for us, as much as we're enabled, feminine and masculine energy in one um, host, if you like, body, or one consciousness. Because we are one consciousness, so both energies exist, of course. Naturally, we live in a world characterised by the masculine and the feminine, the patriarch, the matriarch, at best, or just men and women, or at worst of all, uh, men versus women, and the, you know, the uh, toxic hierarchy of kind of sexual politics of all of that, um, which is really masculine and feminine energy gone awry, and then the beautiful um, reimagining of that paradigm through the LGBT communities and gender realignment, you know, it's just a wonderful flourishing of oneness of the body as well as the consciousness that goes with that. And of course, I'm not, I don't mean to minimise how difficult that path is for some people to arrive at. Um, my own nephew um, began life as my niece, and it's a beautiful thing to be with him now. So there am I, essentially masculine energy um, by nature, by body, reconciled with the archetype of the wise old woman, the eternal figure of masculine energy reconciled, sitting on a park bench, uh, becoming one through open discussion. This is also to see the Christ consciousness, the Christ the Christ lens, the Christ character is a really good example of masculine and feminine energy, both warrior and emotionally available. Then we have the Buddha nature, which is a reconciliation of the two. And in we, the end, we see there is no duality in even in uh, the entire consciousness that pervades the bodies that we tend to assign as man, woman, um, you know, homosexual, heterosexual bisexual, and so on. It really is different ways of manifestations of the particles of the one consciousness. <laughs>